Hi, my name is Chris Centeno. I'm a medical doctor uh, and medical director of Regenerative Sciences Incorporated, a company dedicated to stem cell treatment and research. Uh, I've been heavily involved in stem cell research and we're going to answer the question today of what is an adult stem cell and why is this different from embryonic stem cells? Everybody has heard about embryonic stem cells uh, and uh, I think less is really known by the general public about adult stem cells. We're going to talk about that today. What is a cell? I think we've got to start with just some basic definitions. A cell is a building block of the body. Uh, your body has more cells than all the stars in the sky. There are literally trillions upon trillions upon trillions of cells in your body. So these are building blocks. There are different cell types. Um, there are three main cell types that build a body. Uh, cells that would be part of the ectoderm, which is skin, hair, eye, lens, nerves. Uh, the mesoderm, bones, tendons, muscles, heart, blood vessels, and kidneys. And endoderm, stomach, mouth, colon, intestine, lungs, etc. We're going to focus on adult stem cells today to derive from the mesoderm. That means that they're mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, they can differentiate into bones, tendons, muscles, heart, blood vessels, and kidneys. So stem cells, what is a stem cell? I mean, that's a great question. Uh, stem cells are those cells that can differentiate or turn into another cell, meaning that uh, they can transform themselves from a basic building block into a specific cell, like the picture has down there, muscle, blood, nerve, etc. In embryos, these are used to supply new cells for growth. So some of these basic building block cells would become eye cells, others liver cells, uh, and that sort of thing. In adults, these are the body's repair cells. And we've only really understood this for the last five or ten years. And this is really rewriting medicine for the 21st century. A lot of the textbooks are literally going to have to be rewritten as a result of these cells. So a stem cell is a generic cell that can become a more specific cell. As you can see here, a picture that shows these cells becoming liver cells or brain cells or fat cells or cardiac cells, muscle cells, neurons or nerve cells, um, skin cells, etc. Are there different kinds of adult stem cells? Yeah, there are. Um, with regard to adult stem cells, those are stem cells that live in you right now, and that's really important to understand. You have stem cells in your body right now. They don't just come from embryos. A lot of the stem cells, most of the stem cells in your body are called heme progenitors. These are stem cells that replace blood when, they, when it wears out, and this is the most common type of stem cells. When you see stem cell information on the web, most of the time they're talking about heme progenitors. So if you see that millions of stem cells are isolated, they're talking about stem cells that become blood cells. Regrettably, most of what we need to repair tissue are these mesenchymal stem cells. And these are stem cells that can, re can replace muscle, bone, cartilage, tendons uh, when they get injured. They've also been shown to replace uh, some of the hearing cells, nerve cells, uh, heart cells, and things like that. And then there are also endodermal stem cells, and less is known about those, and certainly less research has been done on those cells. Think of your body as an organism in a constant state of turnover. New cells constantly need to be replaced, uh, and they replace the worn out cells. So let's say you go out for a run. Uh, you're literally killing off cartilage cells in your knees. You're killing off uh, muscle cells in the, the muscles that you're using, tendon cells, and all of those cells get replaced. In fact, many of those tissues would get rebuilt as stronger, including your bones, if you exercise more. So in order for things to get rebuilt as stronger, you've got to kill off some cells, and, and that's really not really widely known. And then they get replaced by these stem cells. Based on the research performed to date, the most important kind of uh, stem cell, or at least adult stem cell, is a mesenchymal stem cell. And we'll use the uh, abbreviation MSC. It's also sometimes called MESCell. But MSC is the most common uh, abbreviation for a mesenchymal stem Based on the research date, again, MSCs can likely repair heart muscle, bone, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, nerves, hearing cells, and other cells. 
Now some of these things are just based on animal models, but for instance we have evidence in our research in, in human models of, of them replacing bone, of them replacing cartilage, uh, them repairing ligaments and those sorts of things. So uh, these are really versatile cells as you can see here that likely have a ton of clinical applications. What else can these stem cells do? Well, one of the things MSCs do is they really are the construction managers. Um, there seems to be a lot of evidence pointing in the direction that they can help other cells build things, that they can help control inflammation during that process, they can bring in new blood supply. They really act as construction managers for the body as well as being stem cells. So they play a very important role. In particular, their ability to control inflammation is very exciting. I mean, think about how many diseases are caused by some sort of inflammation. Um, and again, inflammation is just abnormal swelling and, and abnormal immune responses. So they may be useful for diseases like lupus and multiple sclerosis and inflammatory bowel diseases and inflammatory arthritis and other diseases. So realize that, that MSCs also seem to have immune regulation function. And in some ways, they may one day be considered uh, a 21st century form of penicillin. They're that versatile. Um, and while more research needs to be done, we are starting clinical applications in a lot of areas that we've demonstrated uh, these things can be helpful in. But they have such wide uses that um, they can repair damaged tissues, they can control out of control inflammation, and they can organize body construction projects, bring in new blood vessels, help other cells. So again, one day these may be considered a form of 21st century penicillin. Just as penicillin rewrote medicine uh, in the 1940s, these cells may well rewrite medicine and its application in the 21st century. Where do they live? How do you get these cells? Well, they live in a lot of different places. Uh, bone marrow is where they seem to be the, the most populous, and bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells seem to be of higher quality than other types, including those found in fatty tissues. Uh, they also live in blood, but they're very, very few in blood, so getting them out of blood and using them clinically may be much more challenging. And joint tissues, synovial tissues, they're also found in, as well as other tissues. Can you take these cells from one place and just put them back in another area that needs repair rejuvenation? And I've seen a lot of talk of this. We've certainly experimented with this. Can you take them, for instance, from the bone marrow, just do a quick isolation or filtration step to get the cells, and then put them back to uh, repair or rejuvenate an area? This is probably very difficult to do. We did not have much success in doing this. I know I've seen a lot of information on the web that says that you can do this. The problem is that there are very rare cells. As an example, taking a soda can full of bone marrow would only yield about 50,000 stem cells. Now that sounds like a lot, but consider that a soda can full of bone marrow has trillions and trillions of other cells. Uh, as a better example, if you had a football stadium of 50,000 people, uh, then if that was a full stadium, you'd only have one to five people in that entire stadium who were mesenchymal stem cells, meaning that if all the people in that stadium represented the cells that we find in bone marrow, only one to five out of that entire stadium full of people would be mesenchymal stem cells. So they're really rare. I've heard that you can get tens of millions of stem cells just by drawing some blood. Um, no, not true, uh, meaning that the kind of stem cells that you can get from drawing blood are usually heme progenitor cells, meaning that they're cells that want to become blood tissue. Um, now, obviously, if you're trying to treat uh, blood disease like anemia, that may be a good strategy, but if you're trying to repair cartilage or tendon or something like that, or bone, you're not going to get enough mesenchymal stem cells out of a blood sample to make much difference. So if these cells are so few, how can you get more? Well, one of the ways that we do that, and, and many others as well, is to grow them in the lab to get more. So you can amplify these cells, take them from just uh, 10 or 20 or 30,000 into 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 million, where you can get to a, a number of cells that become clinically relevant. So in summary, this is just a short 
discussion on one topic and there are other topics that that we have to try to teach uh, people about stem cells but stem cells can become other types of cells and that's why they're good at repairing damaged tissue so that's what a stem cell is mesenchymal or mesenchymal stem cells are the most exciting adult stem cells that live in every body everyone's got them these MSC cells are very rare, so they need to be grown to higher numbers in order to get clinically relevant amounts. Thank you so much for listening. Um, certainly happy to discuss this subject. Uh, it's, it's been my passion now uh, for uh, several years, and Regenerative Sciences is a company dedicated to understanding how to use these stem cells clinically. Thanks for your attention.